Um, welcome to, hi everyone. <laughs> welcome to this week's uh, South American Geometry webinar. Uh, let me first remind you, Luis, can we have the info on the chat? Uh, great. So um, let remind you, if you wish to subscribe to the mailing list, you can send the word webinar to our email or you can join our WhatsApp group with one click. Uh, you can check our calendar at the uh, path provided as well as follow our previously recorded talks on our YouTube channel. You can find all this on the chat. Uh, today, we have a uh, good friend, Mario Garcia Fernandez from uh, IFEMAT in Madrid, uh, telling us about non calar clavial geometry and the pluriclose flow. Mario, uh, welcome. Can you please do 50 minutes plus a bit of questions? Sure, yeah, yeah I can. Super. Please go ahead. OK, so thank you very much. It is a pleasure to be back in this Amsur, Amsur uh, uh, seminar, and even if it is um, online. I'm going to do one practical thing. I have noticed that you cannot see my my pointer. So in order to, to point to some of the things during my presentation, I'm going to yes stop sharing for a moment and share again my screen yeah can i no why don't okay for some reason i can't so let me just share my so i i don't have i will not have the pointer that's that's a pity It's okay, I guess. Were you planning on pointing or not? Okay, so now you can see it. Anyway, so what I'm going to talk about is some uh, joint work with uh, Josh Jordan and Jeff Streets, which appeared on the archive uh, around one year ago from now. And it's about the non keral calabria geometry and, and the pluriclose flow. So let me start with some motivation talking about the keller ricci flow. So you start with a with a complex manifold, and then uh, you have a, a Riemannian metric G on M. OK, so now, now you say it is working. That's great. We say that a Riemannian metric G is, is Keller if these two conditions are satisfied. On the one hand, the metric needs to be a uh, Hormitian, or the complex structure needs to be orthogonal, and then uh, the complex structure is, is parallel. Okay, so actually, this condition is very strong and implies both that the Keller form is closed and also the integrability of the complex structure. Here, I'm always going to assume that the complex structure is integrable, so, so I don't need that that much. Anyway, so we have this complex manifold with a remaining metric, uh, which is compatible with the complex structure, and with closed Hormitian form omega. Then uh, we say that a one parameter family of Keller metrics omega t is a solution to the keller ricci flow if this uh, parabolic partial differential equation is, is satisfied. So the evolution of the of the Keller form is by minus, is by minus the Ricci form of the of the Keller form. So what is this rho of omega t? Let me be a bit more explicit. So rho is the Ricci form of the Keller metric, which you could cover, you can calculate or define via taking the Ricci form of the underlying Riemannian metric and rotating by, by the complex structure, J. And one of the magic formulas in Keller geometry tells you that this Ricci form is actually uh, the curvature of a Hormitian metric on the, on the anti-canonical bundle that you can express in this way. So the D bar of log of the determinant of the, of the metric. And because of this local formula, uh, this keller ricci flow equation is, is uh, actually compatible with the with the Keller condition. So you are going to evolve by by the D bar of something and therefore omega T, the condition of being Keller is preserved. If you furthermore use the fact that the complex structure is is, is uh, fixed and rotate by J, then this recovers the more familiar formula for the Ricci flow 
or the evolution of the metric is by, by minus the rigid tensor. So there is a, a factor of two missing here with respect to the usual notation, but you can always get this factor by um, just reparameterizing time. Okay. So this the, the, the study of uh, <coughs> Keller Ricci flow is quite extensive in mathematics in geometry, and it started with this uh, classical theorem by Hamilton and Sao, which states that this Keller Ricci flow problem is is well posed as a as a PDE. So if you have a if you fix a compact Keller manifold, then the Keller Ricci flow uh, with initial condition omega naught when omega naught is the Keller form of the initial Keller structure, uh, exists for some small interval of time, and yeah, and that's it. So this is like the starting point of the theory. If you if you give me a Keller a Keller manifold, I can run the flow. I can start it, and of course, the question is whether this converges, develops singularities, and so on. So the first long time existence and global convergence was proved by Sao in 85. And it's very natural, it's very, nat it's very nice because it recovers actually the Jaustrian for, for club geometrics. So under the topological assumption that the compact Kelly manifold has vanished in first in class, then given any initial Kelly metric, the Kelly Ricci flow exists for all time and converges to omega infinity, satisfying that this, this uh, Keller metric is, is Ricci flat, is Keller Ricci flat. And furthermore, the Keller class of the of the metric omega infinity of the Keller Ricci flat metric is uh, is the same as the as the initial one. This has to do with the fact that I said before that the Keller Ricci flow uh, preserves the Keller condition, but furthermore, because the the Keller metric goes by DDC of something, by del del bar of something, which is the same as DDC, it also preserves the, the Keller class, which is something very, very natural. And this way, Sao recover the yeah. And can I ask, can I ask you something real real quick? Yeah, sure, yeah. Why why do you make C1 depend on J? Yeah, you need you need to I mean, you can you can complex. It doesn't. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. You, you can just take yeah. the complexified tangent model. That's okay. It. Okay. I, I thought you had something else in mind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't really depend, does it? Yeah. 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 You can just take the complexified tangent. Model. Yeah. Okay. So the question I want to address in this talk is how to extend these results to non-killer. Calabria or manifolds. Okay, so, and for me, a non kelly Calabria manifold is going to be a manifold says that a complex manifold says that the first chain class of the manifold equals to and vanishes in, in the second, uh, the wrong homology. So I'm going to take real homology, but you can also impose the stronger condition that the, the first chain class vanishes in, in integral homology. Okay, so this is my definition of Calabiao, and this is the problem I want to address. So how, how do you extend this, this sort of geometrization problem using keller ricci flow to, to non-Keller manifolds? So are there, so is there anything interesting there? Well, we know that <clears throat> any compact complex surface with a first value number O is, is non-Keller, so kind of that mid Keller metrics by Kodaira's classification. And if you want a more Concrete example, you can take the Hopf surface. Just take the complex manifold to be C2 minus the origin mod, uh, mod Z, where Z acts uh, radially as follows. So N acting on Z1, Z2 coordinates in C2 is given by this rescaling. So if you think of, of this uh, space here, C2 minus the origin is just um, R4 minus the origin, which is homeomorphic to S3 cross R, and you're taking quotient by a radial action, so you end up with something that has topology S3 cross S1. Hence, the first betting number is, is 1. From this already, and the previous classification, we know that cannot be Keller, but I mean, here we have a stronger, more naive condition, which is just this manifold has second betting number 0. 
and therefore it cannot admit any Keller metric because any Keller metric admits any Keller metric defines a non-trivial cohomology class in, in the second run cohomology. And another interesting example in in dimension in complex dimension three is if you take SU2 cross SU2 with J a left invariant complex structure, then this manifold, which is uh, homeomorphic to S3 cross S3, has second beta number equals to zero, and therefore it does not admit any any kilometric. So the, another way of seeing this structure is as a Calabi Ekman space. So this is a T2 vibration over over CP1 cross CP1. And and you can also regard it that way. Okay. So are there several <clears throat> there are several proposals for running this uh, analog of South term in the non killer setup uh, using Hermitian Corbett of flows by Stristian and Yusinowski, the churn Ricci flow by Gil Tosati Wainkov, anomaly flows by Fong Picard and Sang, and also the balance flow by Beduli Betsoni. I'm sure I'm missing some people because many people have studied this problem. But in this talk, I'm going to focus in a specific um, a geometric flow for Hermitian metrics, which was introduced by Street Santian and is a particular instance of, of the so-called Hermitian curvature flows. Okay, so let me go for that. So the first thing we need to, to say is which type of Hermitian metrics we want to allow for our flow. Because a priori in, in the in a general compact complex manifolds, there are no killer metrics. But if we take arbitrary Hermitian metrics, this can be just too too wide to deal with. So instead we're going to deal with this type of metrics. So assume that you have a complex manifold, a Riemannian metric G on M is pretty closed. If again G is Hermitian, so J, the complex structure is, is orthogonal. And instead of requiring D of omega equals to zero, which would be the killer condition, we require this weaker condition, D D bar of omega equals to zero. Okay, where well, omega is now the Hermitian form, which is not closed. Okay. So some remarks about this, in case you, you never heard about this, probably you, you did before. So um, this is a natural integrability condition, which is linear in omega, I mean the pretty closed condition. And it's a replacement for the Keller condition. So by a theorem of Gaussian, actually any compact complex surface admits a pretty close metric. So we have a, a large class of, of these metrics, at least in, in, in complex dimension two. And if you ask the natural question about what are the degrees of freedom of a pretty close metric, well, in Keller geometry, the degrees of freedom of a Keller metric are functions is the choice of a killer potential. Here, the the objects are a bit more wild. Actually, there is a potential 104 for the pretty close metric. So locally, any pretty close metric can be written as d bar of a 104 plus del of its conjugate. So this, I mean, morally, just from this condition, you observe that pretty close metrics are more complicated to deal with than killer metrics because whatever PDE you write down for the curvature of a pretty close metric is going to involve vectors rather than functions on the, on the manifold. Okay. okay, and let me give you a simple example, which will appear later in my talk, which is um, <clears throat> this half surface again, C2 minus the origin quotient by the set, the radial action of set. And then here we can write down a very explicit formula for the pretty close metric in the universal cover, C2 minus the origin. So if, if you think of all these formulas, this is just the flat metric rescaled by the by the radius squared in C2 minus the origin. So if you take a look at this formula uh, and you remember your basic analysis, if you take DD bar of this thing, this is essentially identified with the Laplacian of one over r squared, and this is a delta function located at the origin. Since we're removing the origin, this means that this is this is dd bar closed. Okay, so so this is a natural choice of, of pretty close metric. 
which has some nice properties on curvature. But let me let me skip that for a moment. Okay, so what is pretty close flow? Uh, pretty close flow is a, is a flow for, for pretty close metrics. And then we say that a one parameter family of pretty close metrics omega t is a solution to the pretty close flow if this condition here is, is satisfied. So the evolution, by the way, this was introduced by Street Santian in 2010. And then the evolution of the Hermitian form is given by this combination of, of one one forms. So here in the last summon, you may recognize the Chern Ricci curvature, which appeared. Uh, this is the Chern Ricci tensor, which has appeared in the Keller in the Keller and uh, Ricci flow equation. If I were Keller, these two terms wouldn't be there because my omega would be D star and D bar star close. Okay, but here we have these two additional terms. Still, this term is the D bar exact, and these two terms are del plus del bar exact. So this is enough for omega to remain a pretty close metric along the flow. Okay, so let me start this or mention this very briefly. This is a well posed problem. This was a and proof originally by Street Santian in their, in their seminar paper about this thing. And I mean, lo locally in time. So for any choice of background, pretty close metric in a compact complex manifold, you can run the flow for, for a little bit of time. For Keller initial data, this reduces to the Keller Ricci flow. Yes, for Keller initial data, more you will be dropping these two terms here. And this will give you the, the original on the Keller Ricci flow equation that we saw before. Can I, can I just be sure? Can I just be sure? By well posed, you mean it exists and is unique uh, locally in time? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And the, as I said, this preserves the pretty close condition. Okay. So we have this pretty close flow. So why is this interesting? Because if you see this formula, you you say okay i'm i have no idea how these people came up with this with this uh, pretty close flow condition actually is the this uh, pretty close flow is something very geometric and uh, the price you have to pay for understanding this is rather than working with the churn connection and the hermitian metric working with a different connection the, the bismuth connection but let me let me start with this so if if we want to write the pretty close flow in terms of a purely Riemannian object what do we have so suppose that we have a solution to pretty close flow then the metric the Riemannian metric the torsion of the metric which is minus dc of omega t and the leaf form so this is a three form total is q symmetric this is a one form which is minus d star omega t uh, uh, j satisfy these equations here so these equations are called the generalized Ricci flow and actually are yeah, a truncation of the so-called physical renormalization group flow for two-dimensional sigma models in physics. So here you see Ricci flow will be just this term here, these two terms here. Here we have two additional terms for evolution of the metric, which is given by a quadratic tensor Oh, sorry, a, a symmetric tensor quadratic in H in the torsion, which is essentially the only one you can cook up out of the torsion and the metric. And then the lead derivative of the of the dual of the leaf form times G. And then furthermore, you have this nice evolution equation for the for the three form. So up to rescaling by the one parameter group of the diffeomorphisms generated by the dual of the leaf form, what you have is the three form is is, is evolving by the Laplacian. So it's evolving by the heat equation, and then you have this other evolution equation for the for the metric. So, and this is a very interesting flow. It it is uh, motivated by by physics, and if you want to know more about the mathematical aspects of it, you can go to this book recently published in in the AMS, which has a lot of details about the, the general theory. Okay, so one motivation for this is that. It gives solutions to this generalized Ricci flow and also to this renormalization group flow in, in physics. Okay, so in order actually, yeah, I was I was running too much. So in order to make the contact with the physics, and uh, because here the one form which appears in the in the equations is just uh, 
an arbitrary one form, the lead form of the of the Hermitian structure. In order to make contact with the physics, one needs to take the lead form to be gradient. So say if you take these equations and formally take the, the lead form to be the dual of the lead form to be gradient or the lead form to be the exact, then uh, this is this renormalization group flowing in a string theory or in two dimensional sigma models. Okay. So it is only when the lead form has a, a, is a has a potential with respect to the, the exterior differential that uh, this links with the with the physics. Actually, this potential, this function is, is the so-called dilaton functional in, in the in the physics sigma model. Okay. So we have this link with generated rigid flow and also with the with the renormalization group flow. Let me give you this other interpretation in terms of the, of the bismuth connection. So as I told you. The, this flow looks weird just because we were thinking of it in terms of the churn connection. So when I wrote the, the flow, I emphasized this, this term here. Let me go back. I emphasize this term here, which is the churn rigid potential. And then this, these two terms look very weird. And the reason we, this looks weird is because we are not taking the right connection. If instead of using churn, I use the bismuth connection of the particular Hermitian metric, this is the unique unitary connection or Hermitian connection with total skew-symmetric torsion a minus dc of omega, then I can alternatively write the particular flow as the following equation. So the, the variation of omega in time is minus the 1, 1 part of the bismuth Ricci form. Okay, so here bismuth is a connection on the tangent bundle. It is unitary. Therefore, it induces a connection in the anti-canonical bundle, and then we take the, the curvature of the induced connection in the, in the intercanonical bundle, which is given by this explicit formula here. Okay, given this, uh, one, one, one thing that may be surprising, because it is the case in Keller geometry, is that this bismuth Ricci form is not of type 1, 1. It's not. It ha actually has a very interesting 2, 0 plus 0, 2 part, which relates to this new. An equation which appear in this general Ricci flow equation that I showed you before. So motivated by this uh, uh, rewriting of the particular flow, one can very naturally incorporate a two zero form uh, equation, a two zero form evolving also into the picture. So if if instead of just evolving the metric, I also evolve a two zero form just by taking the two zero bit of the or the bismuth Ricci form. And actually, a nice feature of this is that if you take the real part of this, then this precisely evolves with an equation which is uh, is is one one degree less than the the one which appeared in the general Ricci flow. So this will be like the the equation for the B field rather than for the three form H in the in the physics uh, in the physics setup. Okay, so this is going to be important for us. So in order to find to prove our main results and also to uh, yeah, to derive general consequences of this, I'm going to take this more general uh, setup of, of, of the pretty close flow evolving where I evolve the metric along with a two zero form on the complex manifold. And notice that the evolution of the two zero form is completely determined by the metric because it uses the bismuth Ricci form of the Hermitian structure. Okay, so so I can I can drop this term if I want. This is enough to control the evolution of the metric. This is some additional data that I can uh, put into the picture if I want to, and I, and I will want to because it's very useful. Okay, so so far so good. So we have pretty clear flow. Hopefully, this is kind of motivated by now, both from the physics and from the geometric point of view. And then we can ask the following question, which is literally the analog of, of a SAOS result. So assume that you have a compact complex manifold with vanishing first gen class. So I'm going to think of this as, as my Calabria condition. Does the pretty close flow admit global existence and convergence to a pretty close metric with vanishing bismuth Ricci form for arbitrary initial pretty close metric omega? Okay, so assume that your compact complex manifold admits a background pretty close metric and has vanishing first in class, then does the flow converges? And if it does, does it converges to, to a pluricular metric which has vanishing bismuth Ricci form? Okay. 
And surprisingly, or maybe not, the answer is no, even for compact uh, complex surfaces. So there is a, a result by Jeff Streets in a very particular class of compact complex surfaces, which are T2 bundles over high genus Riemann surfaces. You can prove that under some conditions, these, these, are, these have vanishing first in class. And actually what he proves is that for suitable data, for actually T2 invariant data in the total space of the T2 fabrication, Sorry, don't you hear me? Yes. Oh, because I saw someone saying that my mic was okay. So you hear me? Okay, that's good. So everything good, right? You, you hear me? You perfectly. said that. I don't know. Anyway. So. No, we're good. We're good. Okay, so for for T two invariant initial data in this T uh, two vibrations over over high genus Riemann surfaces. Uh, Jeff Streets prove that the, the particular flow collapses the fibers and the metric converges to the negative curvature metric, Keller metric on the on the Riemann surface. So so we already observed that for for a very for for the first non-trivial cases, so compact complex surfaces which are non-Keller, this result is just not true. So something new is happening. Something new is going on. So let me try to, since this is false, let me try to make it a, a stronger, a much stronger condition. So let's assume that the full bismuth curvature vanishes. Can we prove something in, in, in that case? So assume that you have a compact complex manifold with vanishing first in class. And assume that you have a pretty close metric, but which is bismuth flat. Okay. Can we prove in that case that the pretty close flow admit global existence and convergence and, and converge actually to this to this uh, uh, flat pretty close metric or maybe to, to a different one okay this is the question i would like to address so to give you a hint on what are these manifolds so what are the manifolds which admit pretty close metrics which are bismuth flat so the bismuth connection for them is flat this is completely classified it's kind of a recent result so by this term, by Wong, Yang, and Seng, any compact bismuth flat Hermitian manifold admits a, an unbranched finite cover of the following form. It is the product of a compact semi-simple Lie group with a torus. The metric G is bi invariant, and J is left invariant, and is compatible with G. Okay, so these are essentially up to finite cover. These are given by products of semi-simple groups by Torah. Okay, so let's try to solve the question in this in this setup, knowing that we have a background pretty close metric, which is uh, which is uh, bismuth flat. Can we do that? And even more specific, so what happens on the baby example of the hub surface? So uh, surprisingly, uh, seven years after the, the introduction of pretty close flow, the most naive non-Keller manifold, which is the hub surface, uh, was not known whether pretty close flow was admitting long time existence and, and convergence with arbitrary initial data. So there were results with uh, left invariant initial data, but it was not known whether uh, the flow was converging if you're taking an arbitrary pretty close metric as, as a starting problem for, for the flow. So then my question three, which was asked by, by Jeff Streets in this Geometry and Physics Conference in 2017, is does pretty close flow admit global existence and convergence to a multiple of this explicit booth by metric or arbitrary initial pretty close metric omega? Okay. Any questions so far? Well, why should it be a, why should it be a multiple? Why, why would you expect would you expect it to be a multiple? Because so there is a I didn't talk about cohomologies in in non keller manifolds, but there is a natural cohomology class that you can associate to a pretty close metric, which is a class in Apley cohomology, which is defined by DD bar kernel of DD bar 
modulo image of del plus del bar. And on the hop surface, the dimension of the 1-1 AP cohomology group is one. Oh, it's just one. OK, so it, all right. What, what you expect is for each AP class, there exists a unique, uh, a unique uh, uh, point where the flow converges. So in right. general, the particular flow, as, as it happens for the Keller-Ricci flow, uh, evolves the AP class of the solution. But if the first thing class is zero, then uh, actually the, the, the AP class remains fixed. So this is the, ex the expectation is because of this, yeah. by cohomological okay. reasons. OK, so I, I ask three questions in, in order of three sensible questions in order of difficulty. So what happens first? What happens in general? We, we already I already told you that uh, for general compact complex manifolds with vanishing first in class, we cannot expect convergence. Then what happens with the case of bismuth flat pretty close metrics? And then what happens on the hub surface? So the main results in our work try to answer these these questions, at least uh, partially. So the first uh, theorem I wanted to comment is an obstruction for having pretty close metrics, which will have vanishing bismuth Ricci form. <clears throat> so let me let me go for the details and then I comment on the consequences for these three questions that I put, posed. So let F be a holomorphic map between compact complex manifolds from MG to Z. Assume that the base is assume that Z is scalar with has and has vanishing first uh, sorry and has negative first in class. And assume that the differential of x is, is surjective at a point. Then Mg does not admit any pretty close metric with vanishing bismuth Ricci form. So this gives a higher dimensional obstruction to convergence in question one. So in, in our first question that we uh, posed naively, and I already told you that we have examples on surfaces, and we were asking we we're asking the question of whether if we have first in class zero, this and, and a pretty close metric, whether this grants existence, long time existence and convergence of, of the pretty close flow to a bismuth Ricci form, to a bismuth Ricci flat metric. Okay, so, and this telling you that the existence of a of a fixed point for the pretty close flow uh, is actually not not uh, it's not enough to have vanishing first in class. You need you need more, and you have this this obstruction. So let me give you an example and then tell you something about the proof. So to give you a hard dimensional example, you can take a, a degree five hypersurface in P3. And this is a, a holomorphic principle T2 bundle over set, given by these choices of, uh, of first in classes. So I take one of the first in classes uh, of the bundle to be the first in class of set. Then it happens that the cohomology of, of this of the total space of this T2 bundle is the quotient of H2 offset by the generators. And therefore, this manifold has vanishing first in class. And then well, there is there is some things one has to check, but one can suitably choose alpha so that the total space admits a pretty close metric. And then uh, this MJ satisfies all the conditions in the in the theorem. Okay, so it has vanishing first in class. It is it is a so rejection over a Kelly manifold with negative first in class. It admits pretty close metrics, but it does not admit any bismuth in any pretty close metric which has vanishing bismuth Ricci form. So the proof, I can tell you more about it if you if you ask later, but the proof surprisingly is via geometric invariant theory. So we use uh, the Donaldson Ulemet Yau theorem, its extension to Hermitian manifolds to prove this this result. Okay. So let me go for the for the next uh, result I wanted to comment on. So theorem B is about existence, long time existence of the of the <clears throat> of the pretty close flow for a suitable class of non kelly manifolds, those which have Kodara dimension non negative. Let's, the Kodara dimension has something which has to do with the dimension of the of the space of holomorphizations of powers of the canonical bundle. But let me not go into into that. But just some condition on the on the complex structure. So assume that you have a compact complex non keller surface with with this condition on the Kodaria dimension. Then, given any pretty close metric, the pretty close flow 
exists for all time. So this result was proved earlier by Jeff Streets in the case that the omega naught is uh, is invariant under the action of a torus, but here we prove it in, in general. So to link with so, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it, tell me. Sorry. Okay. No, no, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll ask oh, okay. you. Sorry. No, no, I mean, I have a question. I don't want to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, ask your question. That's fine. All right. All right. All right. Uh, so, by, by having non negative Kudara dimension, then this will give you a projective embedding, right? No, no, no. There are. So, for example, um, this is here, there is an example. So, if you if you have Kudara dimension one, then yeah. by by the classification, this is this is a non-killer manifold. Okay. Right. So by the classification, MG is going to be a T2 bundle over a high genus Riemann surface. Okay. okay. And then this theorem one will will apply. So you you know by our theorem, you know that there exists um so the, the particle flow exists for, for a long time, but it cannot converge because of theorem one. What, what happened? Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm here. So I was thinking, you know, I, I, I might, I'm, I'm almost certainly wrong, but I was led to think that Kodaira dimension regulates the, uh, right? So, so it has to do with how many homomorphic sections you have of some power. Well, it, of the, it, the, well there is a, right? there is a this, general definition. You take, you take the dimension of the space of global sections of the canonical power, some, uh, yeah. Some D, and then it is the minimum of the of the it is the minimum natural number says that this polynomial divided by D powers this number is uh, bounded. So, but I don't right. think this is this is this is not implied uh, uh, that the manifold is projected. the existence of a okay yeah. Yeah, yeah almost so some, some, things, some, some weird things can happen in, in right. this, even, okay. even for the case of so this is an example of this thing it's oh. a t2 a t2 bundle over a over a high genus riemann surface and then there, there is a term uh who is it? the other one yeah i don't remember now the other but if you have t2 bundles over killer manifolds unless the t2 bundle is trivial the manifold is going to be non-killer so these are typical examples where where you don't have anyway any, okay. any cool. clear structure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, yes, we know this. Now, this this term gives a conceptual explanation of the result by by Jeff Streets about the collapsing of the particular flow in this two vibration over high genus Riemann surfaces. And yeah, so it is a kind of a satisfying result. But the main point of my talk is going to be about this theorem C. Let me see how far I can get. But let me comment on this. Then this is about the the last question. So what happens for on manifolds which have flat bismuth connection, flat bismuth, uh, yeah, vanishing bismuth curvature. So assume that you have a compact complex manifold with vanishing first in class. Assume that you carry uh, that it carries a bismuth flat, very close metric. Okay, so the the bismuth connection of this is flat. <clears throat> Then, given a pretty close metric omega naught satisfying this cohomological condition, the pretty close flow exists for all time and converges to a bismuth flat pretty close metric omega infinity. Okay, which this may be different from the background one which we have chosen, but uh, still we, we can prove that it is bismuth flat and pretty close. So, <clears throat> what is this cohomological condition here? Let's first try to understand what this means. So omega naught is pretty closed. So it is DD bar closed. Therefore, if I take del of omega, this is a two one form. Okay. And therefore, because omega is DD bar closed, del of omega naught is D bar closed. So it defines a well-defined class in the homology. Okay. So if this condition is satisfied, then I have long time resistance and convergence to a bismuth flat pretty close measure. Okay, so our question too was whether we can prove an analog of South's result on bismuth flat pretty close manifolds. At least we have reduced this question to a cohomological condition here. Okay. 
So I will go into the proof in a, in five minutes from now, and then I will show you why this appears naturally into the picture. Because the, a priori, this is this looks like a very weird condition, and you, you would expect something like the two the two pluriclose matrices to have the same apli cohomology, but actually we need this you know, to to make sense. Actually, if if you have this other thing, if if the two pluriclose metrics have the same every homology, then this is implied, but we can we can prove it in, in more generality. Mario? Case, yeah, sure, yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. So is all the curve uh, be smooth flat? Is what? All the curve, all the solutions for every T? No, 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 no. No, yeah, what, only... what, what, yeah, no so what, what I'm assuming is, I'm assuming that there is some fixed Bismuth flap pretty close metric. We, this is fixed in the manifold. I assume that that, that exists. Then for okay, any but, um, other for, for any other pretty close metric, any other pretty close metric, anything, whatever you, you take. So you can choose one and add del plus del bar for a small uh, one zero form, and then this is going to be another pretty close metric. Okay, if this thanks. condition is satisfied, then the flow converges. But along the flow, you don't have bismuth flat. Uh, the, the bismuth flatness condition is not is not at the beginning, neither along the flow. It's just at the at the at the, yeah, at the limit. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If not, let me specify this term to the case of of the hub surface. Actually, for hub surfaces, we can answer fully the analog of of South's uh, theorem uh, for, for this particular flow. So assume that you have a, a half surface given by a question like this. Then given any pretty close metric omega naught on the half surface, the pretty close flow with these initial conditions exists for all time and converges to a multiple of the booth metric of this explicit metric. So this gives a complete answer to this question posed by Jeff Streets in 2017. And uh, it's a very satisfactory uh, analog of, of South result in the non-killer setup. Okay, and let me emphasize, so results along these lines on half surfaces were proved before for a particular flow, but always assuming that the initial condition is invariant. Okay, it's typically left invariant. Here we are not taking any assumption at all. So this is a this the this is a PDE proof. Okay, there is no it's not an ODE proof. Okay, we just we just you would, we really need to go into into the parabolic equation in order to to prove this thing and into the geometry. Okay. So to finish this part, I would like to mention this this uh, recent term by Giuseppe Barbaro who was visiting the ICMAT uh, last, uh, last fall. And uh, we have this weird condition on the double cohomology. And typically, for bismuth flow manifolds, these double cohomology groups are very complicated to calculate. We were su very surprised to know that it's, it's not so easy to calculate these things. And then I asked Giuseppe whether he could calculate it for some, for some uh, cases, and he was um, yeah, he was, he's very smart. He, he was, he managed to calculate for, for the cases of simply connected Lie groups of rank two. So G2, SU3, or spin five. Getting a, a, a natural result similar to the one we, we got for half surfaces. So assume that you have a compact simply connected uh, simple Lie group of rank two. And so this, this is just one of the elements in this list. Assume that the complex structure, you have a complex structure which is left invariant. And which is compatible with the Riemannian metric associated to the killing form, so to, to the natural beam variant metric. The not by omega f, the corresponding bismuth flat Hermitian metric. And then for any pretty closed metric, omega naught on this complex manifold, there exists a positive lambda, such that the pretty close flow exists for all time and converges to a multiple of this natural uh, Hermitian metric. Okay. And if you, Essentially, what you need to do to prove this theorem uh, is to prove that, um, to, to calculate 
the two one to go cohomology of this thing, or you want even a stronger to calculate the one one apply cohomology for this complex structure. And surprisingly, this these uh, cohomology groups are very difficult to calculate, even in the case of of this situation, this simple situation of of a compactly group with a left invariant complex structure which is integrable, and the natural and even in these cases. So there is there, there is this old result by PT and some further calculations by Daniela Angela, but uh, for arbitrary compact uh, groups with left invariant complex structure, this question seems to be widely widely open. Okay, so so far so good. We have some examples where we can prove long time existence and convergence. So let me go for the proof of one of the results. Serum C. So I had to, there are several results here. But I'm going to focus in this one and try to give you a hint on the proof. And yeah, you will see some mysterious ingredients appearing in the proof, which have to do with, with a, holomorphic, a holomorphic version of general geometry, which, uh, uh, yeah, I find it very nice and very appealing. But let me emphasize the fact that, and this is one of the, the very few instances where this has occurred in the literature, let me emphasize the fact that so far I haven't told you about general geometry at all. And now I'm going to use it for the proofs. And this is this is something which is I think nice of this of this work that we we really need this general geometric framework in order to understand this political field. Okay, so let me go for the for the proof of serum C. So the first thing I'm going to do to prove theorem C is out of a pretty close metric to cook up a holomorphic orthogonal bundle, which is given by an extension of the holomorphic tangent bundle by the holomorphic cotangent bundle. So how do you do that? So assume that you are given a two-one form, which is D-bar closed on a complex manifold. Then on the Dark sum, so in this smooth complex bundle given by the direct sum of the tangent one zero plus the cotangent one zero, I'm going to have this Dolbo operator. So these are just the D bar operators on tangent and cotangent, on holomorphic tangent and cotangent, and then I twist the structure by this two one form. So this two one form I regard it as a zero one form with values in homomorphisms from the tangent to the cotangent bundle. Okay. And this defines a holomorphic extension. So the fact that this double operator is squares to, to zero, so the fact that this is integrable, is precisely the condition that the two one form is deeper closed. So even though I'm not going to use it, this object has much more structure, actually, because the way we have written down the, the operator, one can prove that this is a naturally a holomorphic orthogonal bundle. The holomorphic cotangent bundle is isotropic. And furthermore, it has a very natural pairing on holomorphic sections and the with the structure of a holomorphic corner algebra. So I don't need anything of that at all. I just need this simple uh, fact that if I give you a D-bar closed to one form, then I can cook up this holomorphic extension, this holomorphic vector. Band. OK, so what do you do? What, what do I do now? Suppose that they have a Hermitian form omega on mg. And assume that uh, my omega is pretty close, OK? Then I can take tau, my tau before, to be del of omega, or if you want, 2i del of omega. And I can define a Hermitian metric on q tau given by the following formula. So what I do is, you, want, you can take this explicitly, but another way of, of seeing this is that you take the diagonal metric on tangent one zero plus tangent one zero dual. And then you regard e to the beta as a homomorphism from q tau to itself, and I push forward. So what is this e to the beta? This is uh, an orthogonal transformation of, of q tau. This is a transformation of q tau, an, an homomorphism of q tau, which is the identity is the identity on the cotangent bundle. And on the tangent bundle, if I take a vector field x, it associates x plus the contraction of x with beta. Okay, so it's so, a so-called B field transformation. So I recap out of a D-bar closed complex form, 
I can cook up this holomorphic bundle Q tau, which is an extension. And now, if you further give me a Hermitian form omega on the manifold and a two zero form, then I can define a Hermitian metric by this. Okay, on Q tau. Any questions about this? This starts being a bit more technical, but I just want you to, to be with me for a few minutes more. I'm with you, just a bit mindful of time. Okay. Okay, so we have out of a pretty close metric, I can construct this thing and then with a Hermitian metric. So now I'm going to denote by G this this uh, this Hermitian metric on Q tau on the orthogonal bundle. Tau is 2i del omega. And then I can, because this is a holomorphic bundle and I have a Hermitian metric, I can cook up the churn curvature of this. And then I can calculate this endomorphism MSG, which is the trace with respect to the Hermitian form. Okay, so some people will write this as lambda of FG, big capital lambda of FG. It's given by this formula. So it is given by the trace of the churn curvature by the Hermitian form. Okay, and this is the magical proposition, which is kind of really surprising. So assume that you have omega naught be not as before satisfying the following equation. So it's, I assume that my tau is d-bar closed and I take, and I, and I assume that they have a Hermitian metric and a two zero form says that d-bar of beta zero plus del of omega naught equals tau. So notice in particular, because tau is d-bar closed, taking d-bar of this equation implies that omega naught is d d-bar closed. So omega naught is pretty closed assuming this condition. Okay, so I take a d bar close to one form tau. Now I take omega naught and b naught, which is a Hermitian form and a two zero form satisfying this equation. Then if we have a one parameter family uh, of solutions of the, if we have a one parameter family of pairs omega t, beta t, beta t solving the pretty close flow with this initial condition, that is solving this equation here, the extension of the particular flow by two zero forms. Then the corresponding metric, G of omega t beta t, the, given by this explicit formula here on the bundle Q tau satisfies this equation here. So this is sometimes called Donaldson's flow. But you see, this is very coupled. It's much more coupled than Donaldson's flow. In Donaldson's flow for Hermitian metrics on a bundle, you fix a background metric on the manifold. And then you evolve the Hermitian metric on the bundle. Here, we are using the Hermitian metric omega t to both calculate this tensor, this endomorphism here, because g depends on the metric itself on little omega, but also to, uh, yeah, you, we, we use it to calculate a big G, but also to take the trace of the of the two-form endomorphism body. Okay. So this is a coupled version of Donaldson flow, where the metric itself depends on the metric on the manifold, which is something kind of uh, different from from the from the standard from the standard theory. Okay. Oh, I should be finishing by now, or. Ideally, can we take a couple more minutes? Maybe just oh, okay, 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 uh, okay, okay, yeah. So, yeah, uh, essentially, with this condition at hand, uh, notice that the condition we, we have on uh, omega naught and on beta naught precisely implies the condition which appears in our in our term, this condition on the two one of homology. So, essentially, it's telling me that I can compare the holomorphic bundle Q associated to del of omega with a background uh, holomorphic bundle Q given by a, a, a two one four with this at this uh, lemma which tells me how does the trace of um, the big Hermitian metric evolve with respect to some background metric this is some formula for for the for the heat equation or for the heat operator applied to to this quantity then I can 
prove my theorem. So what, what, what do I want to say? I don't want to go through all this because I don't have time. Let me, let me say it in words. So what happens now? What happens is the following. Suppose that I have a, a bismuth flat pretty close metric. Because the previous formula I showed you, uh, this metric, the big metric, the, the, the capital G metric associated to this bismuth flat metric is going to be churn flat. And because of that, in this equation, I'm going to have that this junk term drops. I don't have this thing. Therefore, the heat operator applied to this quantity, which controls the norm of all the classical objects in the picture, is going to be negative. And from this, I get a, yeah, I got a bounds for all the possible quantities that I want for, for any time. Okay, so this is the, the idea of the proof. That having a background bismuth flat metric makes in this formula for the heat operator applied to, to this combination of traces, this term to vanish, taking G tilde to be the capital G associated to the bismuth flat pretty close metric. And then from this other uh, thing here, I can, and the, and the maximum principle, I can obtain estimates for for uh, the solution of the pretty close flow uh, for any, for any uh, time. Okay, so I, I'm, I finished here and sorry for, for, the, for the time. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let's uh, give a round of applause. Thank you. Maybe we can take we can take one question. If people have one question, um, if not, then then uh, let me ask you what's happening next. So what what are you looking at um, from now on with your pluricloves flow? What, what kind of questions are you planning on addressing? Yeah, well, so one thing is to... There's one interesting thing regarding this theorem. So the way you obtain this abstraction is because if you have, if you have a, a metric which is pretty close and it has vanishing bismuth Ricci form, then this twisted bundle Q that you cook up out of the pretty close metric has a Hermite Einstein metric, the big G that I defined before. This is Hermite Einstein with respect to little omega itself. So this is a, some sort of coupled Hermite Einstein. And uh, you apply then Donaldson Ullenbeck Jao and obtain this term by doing some massage. So one, one interesting thing about this, this setup is that the stability condition which relates to the equation is somehow related to the solution itself. So this is something very weird. So if, if in the in the typical donaldson ullenbe jao theorem, you can rephrase the stability condition purely as a holomorphic condition on the, as a numerical condition for the holomorphic vector bundle. But here right. in this non-killer setup, the stability condition seems to seems to be linked to the solution itself. So there is a there is some work you need to do in order to cook up Clean, and clean obstructions to the existence like this one. So I think right. there is much more to do in, in, the, in this realm. So like trying to disentangle what sort of stability conditions uh, are related to the existence of this uh, bismuth richie flat pretty close metrics. And yeah, and of course, um, ideally, one would like to characterize uh, Long time existence and convergence of the particular flow along this South result. And we, I mean, already from this, we observed that this is related to some stability condition. But this is, mm. yeah, we're very far from that, I guess. Cool. All right. Um, if there are no more further questions, can we? Uh... Hello. I think, are you there, Enrique? It seems that he's not <laughs> here anymore. Okay. Yeah. Now he's back. <laughs> Sorry, I, I dropped. I was gonna say, let's. If there are no further questions, let's thank Mario again, please. <laughs> Thanks. Okay.